apply narrow strips of fabric along the mold's edge. This at the same time covers the coupling layer. The first fabric ply is laid in the fresh laminating resin. The twilled glass fabric is highly drapeable and can be laid out free of creases with some practice. For this mold we have trimmed the first fabric ply with the fibers running diagonally. This maximizes the fabric's drapeability in the mold. Using the dry laminating roller, we first press into place the center of the fabric and then impregnate the fabric from the center outwards. Further resin is applied with a laminating roller. The degree of impregnation can be seen best on glass fibers because their fibers turn transparent when wet. The second glass fabric ply is arranged in two parts because the longitudinal and transverse courses of its fibers do not permit crease-free placement for this component. At the mold line, the fabric pieces overlap by a few millimeters. The laminating work involves laying the glass fabric ply by ply in the mold and impregnating it with epoxy resin. The two glass fabric plies are laid over each other so that their fiber orientations are turned through 45 degrees to each other. This minimizes mold distortion and enhances the tear strength. Resin must be applied until it completely fills all the cavities between the fibers. Yet not too much resin should be applied. With this hand layup method we obtain a fiber volume fraction of about 40%, i.e. fibers make up 40% of the volume, the resin making up 60 of the total volume. The first two laminates behind the mold overlay are glass fabric plies. In order to provide the mold with an adequate wall thickness and hence flexural strength, we continue to lay up the base structure with laminating ceramic and M1 fabric. M1 fabric can be easily trimmed with micro-toothed fabric scissors or an electric knife. M1 fabric is a complex of coarse glass fiber weave and mat. It is processed together with laminating ceramic and yields a coat thickness of 5 mm in the same working cycle. The laminating ceramic is a modified plaster and is mixed with water. The relatively coarse M1 fabric is impregnated in the laminating ceramic and then applied to the previous mold coats. Air bubbles are stroked out manually. Finally, the mold should be left to cure for at least 24 hours at room temperature. Once the mold materials have completely cured, the edges of the molds are trimmed. The glass fiber reinforced plastic and the laminating ceramic can be trimmed very efficiently with a Multimaster, whose oscillating saw blade ensures a precise cut. At the same time, this tool emits very low dust levels and poses little risk of injury. Nevertheless, an assistant can help greatly by directly suctioning off the grinding dust. When the mold does not exhibit an undercut and has previously been treated thoroughly with release agent, the molding should not cause any problems. To separate the mold and master pattern, you can first use a soft wooden rod. New molds must be thoroughly waxed several times before they can be used to manufacture the first components. 
The new mold is waxed four times with the priming wax as shown here. The mold's edges must be waxed thoroughly to avoid adherence of the finished component. Previously to continuation, the release wax needs to be left for several hours until it no longer contains any trapped air. Before manufacturing, the component film releasing agent is applied once again with the sponge. Depending on its thickness, the film releasing agent may take up to 30 minutes to dry. Epoxy resin must be inspissated with a Sixotrophy enhancing agent if the liquid resins are not to drain away at vertical surfaces. This inspissated resin can then be used as the overlay that is the first transparent coat on the component we have chosen for our example. The Sixotrophy enhancing agent continues to be added to the laminating resin until the resin no longer drips off the wooden mixing spatula. To make this component, we first apply thixotrophic overlay resin. Once this overlay resin has gelled, two plies of glass fabric are laid next. These two glass fabric plies form the outer surface layer of the honeycomb sandwich component. Previous to laminating this outer surface layer, we must initially fill the edges with inspissitated resin. First, low viscosity laminating resin is rolled on the gelled overlay. Following this, the first glass fabric ply is applied and laminated with the roller. The twill weave of diagonally trimmed fabric plies greatly facilitates their crease-free application. Excess glass fabric can be trimmed precisely along the edges with the special offset scissors. The first two layers of glass fabric with a weight per square meter of 163 grams are applied diagonally such that their fibers cross at right angles. These two plies yield a coat thickness of about 0.3 millimeters. In order to avoid an imprint of the honeycomb core on the component surface, the first two fabric layers are left to dry overnight. Previously to continuing the laminating process of the dried GRP plies, the laminate must be thoroughly roughened. The recumbent bicycle seat exhibits adequate flexible strength and yet a low weight when it is manufactured as a honeycomb sandwich structure. This honeycomb sandwich structure is taken directly from nature and combines high wall strength and the associated high flexual strength with a very low weight. A key constituent of a honeycomb sandwich component is the honeycomb core which is very light and, when unattached, also very flexible. sehr leicht und im unverbundenen Zustand auch sehr flexibel ist. We use a 5 mm honeycomb core which, with a gross weight of 29 kg per cubic meter, is approximately 50 times lighter than the end membranes bonded to both sides of the sandwich. This sandwich therefore exhibits a high flexural strength and yet is very light. The GRP surface layers here are 0.3 to 0.5 mm in thickness. If there is to be an optimal bond between the honeycomb core and the GRP end membranes, the core must be bonded to the membranes and then pressed down over its whole surface. A completely uniform contact pressure can be obtained in vacuum back molding. Dazu werden wir gleich ein GFK-Gewebe auftragen, werden das 
mit etwas Harzüberschuss laminieren und stecken das Here we'll be laying up a glass fabric with a little excess resin and then after we have positioned and secured the honeycomb core in place with adhesive tape placing the whole structure in a bag This is then connected to and evacuated by a vacuum pump Here we utilize the atmospheric pressure of one bar as a comparison one bar corresponds to a pressure of about 10 tons per square meter Our mold is approximately half a square meter in size. In other words, vacuum molding applies a pressure of up to 5 tons on this component. The additional glass fabric ply reinforces the overlay and functions as a coupling layer. When laminating the transparent glass fabric, the uniform application of resin can be easily identified. This is very important if the honeycomb core and overlay are to adhere well to the entire surface of the component. Excess glass fabric is trimmed with the offset scissors. To achieve adhesion between the honeycomb structure surface layers and core, the additional glass fabric ply has been laminated with excess resin. The honeycomb core has been trimmed precisely. It must be secured in place with adhesive tape to avoid dislodging before placement into the vacuum bag. The film hose is now joined to the vacuum sealing tape on the one side. Finally, the mold and the previously secured honeycomb core are completely placed in the bag. For large molds, you can also first extract the air with a vacuum cleaner. The vacuum film must lie tightly at all points if the contact pressure is to act over the whole surface. Only when the film bag is absolutely tight can we obtain the maximum vacuum of under 0.9 bar. Various vacuum pumps are available for the various applications. The P1 pump is used by laboratories and hobbyists and on small molds. The more powerful P2 and P3 pumps are recommended for professional use on large molds. The balloon experiment demonstrated here is intended to explain how vacuum molding works. The balloon has been inflated and tied. The transparent vessel is connected to the vacuum pump and is now slowly evacuated. The lower the pressure in the vessel, the more the balloon inflates owing to its internal overpressure. The vacuum is maintained until the resin has dried. After 24 hours the vacuum pump is switched off and the vacuum bag is opened. Under the uniform contact pressure exerted by the vacuum bag, the honeycomb core has formed a full surface bond with the first surface layer. Some of the low viscosity laminating resin has been drawn through the honeycomb. The adhesive tape, used earlier to secure the honeycomb core in place, can now be removed. Any honeycomb core material projecting at the edges is trimmed roughly with a knife and then rubbed down. In doing so, it must be ensured that the honeycomb core does not detach from the surface laminate. Filling compounds can be applied to the honeycomb core's edges and any apertures. This compound of a resin and microballoon mixture is placed in a bag and injected into the honeycomb's cavities before the second surface layer seals the core as practiced by confectioners.
The second surface laminate completes the honeycomb sandwich. As a measure for preventing the honeycomb's cavities from filling with resin during lamination, the second surface laminate is pre-impregnated on a film. This laminate is subsequently laid together with the film on a honeycomb core. Further fabric plies can be laid directly on top. Here, the edges have additionally been filled in with a mixture of resin and microballoons that serve to enhance the strength of the edge. Following this, a peel ply, a perforated film and an absorbent mat are placed onto the surface laminate. The entire structure is then evacuated for the last time by means of the vacuum molding method. The pre-laminated glass fabric is transferred to the honeycomb along with the film. Once the film has been removed, the pre-impregnated glass fabric can be smoothed down. The first pre-impregnated glass fabric ply then prevents resin from filling the honeycomb's cavities when lamination continues with the following fabric plies. In this case, the second surface laminate consists of two glass fabric plies laid at 45 degrees to each other. The peel ply is not as drapeable and is therefore applied piece by piece. It needs only be pressed lightly in place. It will automatically be impregnated later under the contact pressure exerted by the vacuum bag.